Welcome back to the Rocket Science 101. This is episode 2 and today we are exploring one of the most important families of engines in aviation history. What is duck jet propulsion? Duck jet propulsion refers to engines that entrain and energize airflow inside a duct. In simple terms, they suck in atmospheric air mix it with fuel, burn it and push it out to the back to produce thrust. The key advantage is that they do not need to carry oxygen with them. The atmosphere provides it. This makes them far more efficient within earth skies than rockets which must carry both fuel and oxidizer. This class includes turbojets, turbofans, ramjets, pulse jets. All share one core principle, don't forget it. Accelerate air through a duct, generate momentum and create thrust. Rockets versus duct jets, a direct comparison. Let's take a closer look at how duck jet engines and rockets compare. To really understand the differences, we will go through each performance parameter one by one. Thrust to weight ratio. This number tells us how much pushing force an engine produces compared to how heavy it is. Rockets can achieve around 75 to 1. They produce 75 times their own weight in thrust. That is why rockets can lift enormous payloads straight off the ground. Turbojets, even with afterburners, only reach about 5 to 1, while ramjets at Mach 3 can do about 7 to 1. This means rockets are built for raw, explosive power, while jet engines are lighter pushers, designed more for efficiency than brute force. Specific fuel consumption. This is basically miles per gallon for engines. How much fuel you burn to produce a certain amount of thrust. Rockets burn fuel extremely fast with values of 8 to 14 pounds of fuel per hour for every pound of thrust. Turbojets are much more efficient around 0.5 to 1.5. Ramjets fall in between at 2.3 to 3.5. So if you want to go to space, rockets will get you there. But they guzzle feel like there is no tomorrow. Jets, on the other hand, sip feel much more efficiently, but they are tied to the atmosphere. Specific thrust. This tells us how much thrust an engine can produce relative to the size of its mouth, the frontal area that faces the oncoming air. Rockets can generate between 5,000 and 25,000 pounds of thrust per square foot. Turbojets make about 2,500 and ramjets about 2,700 at Mach 2. So, rockets pack far more punch into a smaller size, which is why their nozzles can be relatively compact compared to the giant thrust they deliver. Specific impulse. Think of this as the efficiency clock. It measures how much thrust you get per unit of fuel flow per second. The higher the number, the longer an engine 
can run on the same amount of fuel. Rockets around 270 seconds. Turbojets an incredible 1600 seconds. Ramjets about 1400 seconds. This shows why jet engines are kings of long distance flights. A rocket will burn through its fuel in minutes, but a jet can cruise for hours. Altitude limitation. Here is where rockets have a unique advantage. Rockets have no limit. They don't need air, so they can climb into space. Turbojets stop working above 14 to 17 kilometers because the air becomes too thin to compress and burn. Ramjets do better, working up to 20 kilometers at Mach 3 and with hydrogen cooling they can even push to 45 kilometers at Mach 12. Still, both types of jet engines are tied to the atmosphere. Once the air runs out, so does the engine. What does all this mean? Rockets, massive thrust, space capable but incredibly fuel hungry and short lived. Jets, efficient and long lasting but trapped within Earth's atmosphere. It's like comparing a sprinter and a marathon runner. The rocket is explosive power for a short burst while the jet is endurance over the long run. How turbojets work? The turbojet is the classic duct engine. Air enters the front and is compressed by a compressor. Fuel is injected burned and the hot gases expand. The turbine extracts some energy to keep the compressor running and the rest is accelerated out of the nozzle. Turbojets powered the first jet fighters of World War II and continue to serve in some supersonic aircraft today. Their evolution into turbofans made commercial air travel practical, efficient and global. Ramjets and scramjets. For supersonic and hypersonic speeds, the ramjet becomes more efficient. It has no compressor or turbine. Instead, the vehicle's own speed compresses the air. Fuel is burned, gases are expelled, and thrust is produced. Hydrocarbon ramjets work up to about Mach 5. With hydrogen cooling, they can go to Mach 16. Then there are scramjets, supersonic combustion ramjets. Unlike normal ramjets, Scramjets allow airflow to remain supersonic even inside the combustor. In experimental flights, scramjets have exceeded Mach 9, hinting at the possibility of hypersonic transport across continents in just a few hours. History and applications The Pulse Jet was one of the earliest duct engines famously used in the German V-1 cruise missile. Today, turbojets and turbofans dominate aviation. Ramjets are coming in high-speed missiles and scramjets remain experimental, but they might one day power a hypersonic aircraft or even assist space launch systems. To summarize, Duck jet propulsion engines rely on Earth's atmosphere for oxygen, making them highly efficient within our skies but useless in space. Rockets, by contrast, bring their own oxidizer and can operate anywhere.
but at the cost of fuel efficiency. In episode 3, we will explore rocket propulsion itself, the engines that break free of Earth and open the path to space. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next step in our rocket science 101 journey.